everybody. I want to talk about why unhealthy behaviors continue. And when I kind of dive into this, I'll just talk about family history and things like that. We all know someone who was very challenging, difficult, you know, had drug problems, is an alcoholic, just overall wreaked havoc in the family. And we knew this person was difficult, but you lived with the, oh, nobody's going to say anything just because we're not going to upset grandma or something like that. I had an aunt, um, my mom's younger sister, who lived with my grandmother, even after, you know, she started working. She just never got married, never moved out of the house. And um, she was pleasant and kind, but when you go over to my grandma's house, no matter what time of day or night, she always had a beer. And, and so she always had a beer and when that beer was done she'd get another and so as an adult um i don't remember how old i was but i said to my mom do you think someone should say something oh no grandma's fine this and that and and then um my aunt fell my grandma had to cover for her and my grandma lied and finally told the truth and said my aunt had fallen because she was drunk and couldn't get off the floor I had to call the ambulance and that was that and i'm wondering why we are so afraid to confront people that are unhealthy. When we don't, the unhealthy behavior not only thrives, but it grows and it continues to wreak havoc in our lives and the lives of those bystanders. The rest of the people who, aren't, who are basically on the straight and narrow. So why are we all so afraid to rock the boat? When it comes to parental estrangement, I don't know about you, but my daughters have been estranged for 14 years and everyone's, I said to my family and people, other people, have you talked to my daughters? Yeah, well, I talked to them, but we don't talk about you. They don't want to talk about you. And I'm, you know, if I talk to them, they're going to disconnect from me and I can't have that and this and that. And so it was swept under the rug. And instead of someone saying, FYI, what you're doing is kind of crappy why don't you just talk to your mom I'm sure she would listen to you and she's a reasonable person instead nobody says anything which allows the estrangement to grow continue and to the point where um, my youngest daughter told people I was dead so why are we afraid what happened to our voices why are we afraid to rock the boat are we afraid of grandma and we don't want to upset her because everyone said, don't say anything, it'll upset grandma. But yet, the rest of the family and everyone else suffers in silence. While that person continues to behave in a way that is disruptive, toxic, and is really the topic of conversation every single time you get together. Is she still drinking? Did, how much? It is really quite crazy. Well, we're... When did this start? When did we feel we couldn't we couldn't be direct? We couldn't be honest. We couldn't say, "Hey, FYI, you know, it's it's you might want to talk to your mom if you're estranged from your mom or your dad. Why don't you just talk to him? Why why do we have to let that person, the unhealthy person, control the situation? Why are we so concerned?" Is it because we think they're fragile or that they're just going to cut themselves off from other people? I, what, what are we afraid of is my question. <laughs> it wasn't until I went to Al-Anon, got kind of the balls to do an intervention with my dad. And, and then I said to my mom, you all need to do something. Or they took action because my aunt, like I said, had fallen and couldn't get up. And... Uh, there was an Al-Anon meeting, and I was told about it. I showed up. The Al-Anon meeting was at the church, not too far from my grandma's house, and I walked in the room. I, w I was invited by my mom. Walked in the room, and everyone was sitting around the table crying. It was the AA, the AA person running the, the meeting. Then uh, to the right of him was my aunt, then my grandma, then my uncle, then my mom, and me. And then a couple of my other uncles, and they were all crying. And they're talking, and 
And I finally said to my aunt, are you an alcoholic? Yes. And I said, are you going to stop drinking? She said, no. And I said, well, this is grandma's house. She can make that decision. And my aunt said, she, you can't do that. And I said, actually, yeah. And I turned to my grandma and I said, are you going to agree that you're not going to allow alcohol in your house anymore? And she said, yes. And I looked at everyone in the room, at all my uncles and that. And I said, your tears don't affect her. She loves alcohol more than she cares about your feelings. That's what she loves. That's her first love. So I walked in, took care of business, and after that, my grand, my aunt stopped drinking. I'm not going to take credit because I'm not the one who had to stop drinking, but it takes someone with balls of steel to confront a situation head on. Even if you're the hardest pounding a million miles a minute, you know this is this is not going to be it's it's not going to be favorable for one for the person causing wreaking havoc or causing dissension in the family. It's not going to be easy. They may strike out at you. If you've seen intervention on TV and you see the um, addict strike out at people in the room that love them, that's kind of what it's like. So anyways, um, let's stop being afraid. If my daughters were sitting in the room with me, I would say what... What's up? What's going on? Why are we so afraid to approach our children? We got to ask ourselves that. We have to stop allowing them to control the situation. No one's going to control the rest of my life. That's on me. So with that said, I'll be back.